Celebrating its 45th year, the 2010 Art and Apples Festival took place in Rochester Municipal Park. Things officially got underway when the Stony Creek High School Marching Band performed on the main stage on Friday evening. At a VIP event at the Rochester Community House on Friday evening, we caught up with some of those responsible for making the festival possible. Diane Young told us the festival is the largest fundraiser of the year for the Paint Creek Center for the Arts located in downtown Rochester. Well, I'm excited every year. We, this is just such a fantastic festival. This year we are ranked 20th out of 2,000 art festivals in the United States. Um, I'm excited because the park is beautiful and it's um, gonna be great weather and I'm just excited to have everyone here and the whole community come together to pull off Art and Apples. It's our largest fundraiser for the year. This is our main uh, source of revenue to, so that we can run our programming, but it's also a program. In other words, part of our strategic mission is to provide an outlet for um, artists to be able to make their craft and sell their craft. So this is a wonderful outlet for artists to sell their um, work. It's the 45th year and I, I believe that this, this festival really embraces the community and the community embraces the festival and I think, I think it's a really special thing for them each year. We can see a lot of them out in the park tonight especially and, and people here at our VIP parties so, so it's really, it's a great community regional event. As a community hospital, you know, we need to be good citizens within our community, and that's just part of being a good citizen, uh, making, uh, you know, supporting community activities like the Arts and Apples, which is such a, uh, a key element of the fabric of this community. Arts and Apple is it's, it's just a fantastic event for the whole community. It brings us together. We are so fortunate to have a beautiful park right downtown Rochester. Um, community House is kind of the hub of Arts and Apples and uh, the, the park just expands right around it and it's just a beautiful site. I mean look at the trees and the river and it's right downtown but you wouldn't know it's just like this little piece of heaven. 265 artists took part in the juried art show with many coming from other parts of the country. Walking around the park, you'd find artists offering every media imaginable from painting to photography to pottery and sculptures. This one I throw the form on the potter's wheel, I burnish it, it comes out of uh, the kill white, then forget about potter after that. They're all paintings on clay. I'll spray it black, I'll use quarter inch tape, 16th inch tape, I'll tear a piece of tape. This is finger painted. Removing the stenciling, I'll draw this image, put him into the computer, stretch him out, get him in different shapes and sizes, cutting the stencil, finger painting in that space, tearing tape, masking off, airbrushing. The pieces are sealed with uh, 10 coats of lacquer. Uh, it's a great local neighborhood show. Uh, it's just been a good turnout, quality crowd, knowledgeable, educated, so they understand what we're doing here. How does one stumble into uh, these uh, pet portraits? How did this all come about? It was uh, kind of an accident. At the time, we were doing pictures for little boys and little girls' rooms. And we thought, you know, we don't have anything for people who don't have children. You know, some people, their pets are their children. So we did one dog in a martini glass, kind of snowballed from there. That was like nine years ago. So just based on the response that you got from that, it just kind of took a... Like First show we did, we had a line of people. Do you have a Boston Terry in a martini glass? Do you have this? Do you have that? Just kind of built up over nine years. It's kind of overtaken the booth. I'm a painter and I do watercolor and acrylic. It's um, contemporary, bright colors. I'm trying to express the feeling of the paint, of the music. Most of them are musicians and dancers. and trying to make them look like what they sound like. <laughs> you get huge crowds through here, so it's, you know, and it's, it's close to home and <laughs> you get good support from the community. Some of the artists we talked to were attending the festival for the very first time. Gary Love of Riverside, California was visiting Michigan for the very first time. To be honest, it is actually my first time in Michigan. So we've been kind of long time in coming, but we've been excited to get here. So we were 
we're pretty anxious to do a little exploring and we might be doing some shooting in the area over the next couple weeks as well since we're already here. Well, I shoot all landscapes. It's all taken with uh, older film cameras, mostly 6x7 and 6x17, trying to basically capture what I see on film uh, and basically produce some large prints to sort of make people feel like they were there. You know, that's the goal. I want it to look like a window. I want you to look at it and put, put an image on the wall where you wish you had that window view. Everything looks really good. Um, I'm excited, yes. All nice quality work, that's important. What they are is they're uh, all separate pieces of wood, like a puzzle, that I, I cut out, sand, and then I stain or paint them. I paint them with the airbrush, give them the color, and then I glue them back together on a solid back. Yeah, I airbrush them with a transparent paint. So you're actually seeing the wood grain through the paint, so it gives you a really neat effect. Yeah, they're very different. First timer Jan Bowden, formerly of Traverse City, now an Ohio resident, was drawing curious onlookers with her recycled art, made mostly of scrap metal. First of all, our biggest product is a bell or a wind chime that we make out of recycled oxygen tanks, CO2, fire extinguishers, or dive tanks. They sound like... Um, other work that we do is the wall art. It's made out of galvanized roofing and copper. Um, my Amish neighbor tore down a pig barn, and that's the roofing from the pig barn. Um, I have a bird bath and just a freestanding piece. A uh, bridge was torn down in Canton, Ohio, so the steel that was used, that was bridge material, we used to make the bird bath. We try to incorporate a piece of recycled something in everything that we do. Oh, I've been doing Arts and Apples now about 13 years, and it's a beautiful park, uh, nice setting. It brings out a good crowd from the metro Detroit area. Uh, I always get apple pies before I leave the event. You know, they're, all, they're always good. Speaking of apple pies, on Saturday, dignitaries and celebrities gathered together for the fourth annual Apple Pie and Apple Dessert Bake Off. Local amateur bakers competed for ribbons and bragging rights and a gift basket from Westview Orchards. Well, everybody loves their baking and they want to make sure that they share it with, other, with everyone else and uh, see if in fact that they have the best recipe for what, that, what it is that they're making. There were about a dozen entries in the pie category, which was judged by the husband and wife team of Jason Carr and Taryn Asher of Fox 2 News. They told us what qualities make an ideal apple pie. Well, you know, I look for innovation as well as traditional, uh, you know, what you'd expect in an apple pie. And a nice crust, you know, not too dense, but not too light either. The thing has to hold together. It has to be a very satisfying dessert experience. <laughs> How about you? Um, I like the originality, but I think the flavors need to blend. Anything that just comes out at you right away and just, just it's a little disturbing to your palate, then I'm not for that pie. But if it all seems to me melt together, then I, I like it. I like originality, too. In the dessert category, veteran judge Rochester Hills Mayor Brian Barnett was joined by Rochester Council Member Kim Russell and Miss Oakland County Elizabeth Hawthorne. All of the desserts were required to include apples as the main ingredient, but were presented in a wide variety of ways. Mayor Barnett described the challenges of judging the dessert category. Well, you know, it challenges is, a, I guess, a unique, unique way to describe it, right? I mean, you have to sit there and try 15 desserts, so it's not really that much of a challenge. But, uh, you know, we had uh, entries this year with the uh, toffee, with uh, uh, fruit. Uh, we had uh, some chocolate. Uh, we had a lemon. Uh, so I think the desserts, people have the opportunity to be a little more creative in their entries, and so you get a little more uh, diversity in what you, what you sample. Uh, uh, you know, Rochester Municipal Park is the perfect place. Uh, it's a great uh, opportunity for the community to get together, showcase the art. I'm proud that this is ranked in the top 20 in the nation and uh, pleased to participate in it and this is a great gig. I love being mayor. After all the judges had their fill and the votes were tabulated, the winners were announced. Winning first place in the dessert category was Anne Marie Maddox of Lake Orient. Um, the spices make it a little bit different. I use cardamom, which is not something you usually find in an apple dessert, but it tastes it gives it kind of a light, bright flavor. Um, I, borrowed, I borrowed techniques from a lot of very impressive uh, cookbook authors, Julia Child, Rosalie Barenbaum, um, people who know their apples. So I b borrowed from the best, and I'm pleased, so pleased that it worked. And taking first place in the apple pie category was the only male contestant, Rochester Hill's own Bob Gilbert. 
My dad makes a lot of pies, and his favorite pie is a strawberry rhubarb pie. And, of course, it's an apple pie contest. And so I started thinking, you know what, maybe I can put some strawberries and rhubarbs into it. So it's about 80% apples, and strawberry and rhubarb on it, and the crumb topping kind of seals the deal. What were the qualities of the winning pie? Um, savoriness, tastiness, the right blend of tart and sweet. Um, maybe something a, just a tiny bit outside the norm that you would expect from a traditional apple pie, but delicious all the same, and the crust was, was great. No, it was delicious. It was different, though, too, and it still represented fall. Don't you think? Just oh, this absolutely. time of the year, it was, it was good, really good. From Rochester Municipal Park, this is Joe Johnson reporting for CMN-TV News Briefs.